Coming up, going to extremes from the drought out west to super soaking events in the northeast. We'll explain what all this summer weather is about. Also ahead, Dr. John will be here with a few tips for kids heading back to school. Plus, play date. This sea otter is having a ball, we'll explain. Then this panda is marking a milestone. We'll head to Washington, D.C. for the celebration and teamwork. These two kids have come together to work on a special project that has brought their communities together. I thought it was just really cool and inspiring so it could inspire a lot of other people. The story just ahead. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. It's great to be with you guys. We've got a super lineup as always just ahead, including our picture of the week. I can't get enough of this particular video. Plus, I'm really excited to share this sweet story about two youngsters we profiled here on Nightly News Kids Edition who recently joined forces to help others. We've got their story coming up in just a few moments. But first, we begin this week on the weather front. Here at home, folks across the United States have experienced some pretty severe weather from wildfires burning in the west amid drought conditions to flooding this week in places like Tennessee and also in parts of the northeast. We've also experienced, get this, the hottest July on record. Amazing. New data released by NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information shows that 2021 outdid itself as the hottest July month ever recorded. And our friend Dylan Dreyer tells us more. As temperatures soar, we start to see more extreme climate events, frequent heat waves, and extreme droughts, all due to climate change. What exactly is a drought? You're probably thinking dry, hot, no water. A drought is a shortage of precipitation, such as rain or snow, over a period of time. You know those big H's and L's we put all over the weather maps? Well, the H stands for high pressure, and it means lots of sunshine and dry conditions. But unfortunately, out west, that high has been locked in place for far too long, and that means way too much sunshine and dry conditions and not nearly enough rain. Dry ground dry air, hot temperatures, and wind out west are very dangerous ingredients that cause wildfires to spread. There are several wildfires currently burning. Also, without water, farmers can lose their crops, your fruits and vegetables can get more expensive, and rivers and lakes may dry up. Almost all of California right now is facing serious drought conditions. Throughout the country, we've already seen heat waves, Heat waves typically happen in the summertime. A heat wave is a period of abnormally hot weather lasting more than two days. The actual definition of a heat wave, though, depends on where you live. For example, in the Northeast, a heat wave is three days or more at 90 degrees or higher, usually paired with something we call humidity, a measure of moisture in the air. All this extreme heat can impact our infrastructure, from cracking roads to straining our electrical grids. For those of you on the East Coast, you may ask, why does the heat sometimes feel so uncomfortable? Well, when your body tries to sweat when it's humid, there is so much moisture in the air that your body can't evaporate the sweat as easily. That's why it feels hot and sticky. For those of you out West, it may feel hot and dry. Your body is constantly trying to cool down, so when you sweat, the sweat is constantly evaporating but that leads to a higher risk for dehydration. Dehydration is when your body overheats um, and doesn't get enough fluid. You can increase how much fluid you get or how much water you drink, not just by drinking water in a bottle, but you can also choose fruit that has a lot of water in it. For example, watermelon, as well as different vegetables that can have a lot of water in them. To stay safe this summer, Dr. Azar says it's important to stay hydrated. Stay hydrated, dress lightly. That means lightweight, light color, and one layer, and cool off as much as you can. Jump in the sprinkler or jump into the pool. All right, Dylan, thanks very much. Now let's get to another story we continue to follow in this program. That's the coronavirus, of course. New cases continue to rise across the country. This comes as more kids are heading back to school and there's news this week regarding the Pfizer vaccine. And here to answer your questions is our pal, Dr. John Torres. And Dr. John, before we get to the viewer questions this week, what should kids keep in mind as they begin to head back into the classroom for many the first time in a really long time? 
Now you're right, Lester, some kids haven't been back in classroom for well over a year, so going back, you want to make sure you stay safe. First and foremost, wash your hands throughout the day as many times as you need to. That 20 seconds is important. Lester, I know yours was the happy birthday song twice, mine is the alphabet song, whatever it takes to do 20 seconds. On top of that, you want to wear, take extra masks with you just in case. That way if yours gets dirty or you simply get tired of it. Let's say I'm wearing this all day and I want to switch to this. Just that way you have an extra mask, you can do that. On top of that, stay home if you're sick. Even if you think it's allergies or you think it's just a small cold, you wanna make sure you stay home so you don't spread anything to other people. But most importantly, Lester, have fun and play with your friends. That's important. All good advice. And also we got word this week, the Food and Drug Administration has granted full approval of the Pfizer vaccine for the coronavirus. Can you explain what this means? Because we've been hearing about the Pfizer uh, uh, vaccine for a long time. Right, and the Pfizer is the first one to get full approval. The other vaccines are probably gonna get it in the months to come. But what this means is the FDA looked at all the information for six months after people got the vaccine. They studied it in tens of thousands of people to make sure it's safe and effective. They went to the manufacturing plants to make sure those are okay. And they said, okay, now we're sure we wanna give it a permanent approval, which means you're gonna see it in more places. You're gonna see more people making sure they get the vaccine and more companies making sure that their employees get the vaccine. But the important thing thing to remember is this is for 16 year olds and above for 12 to 15 is still that emergency use authorization and for under 12 they're still working on it all right let's get to our viewer question this week take a listen hi my name is Aaron Washington and I live in Bowie Maryland and my question is what happens if you put a vaccine for people 12 over 12 years old into a person that is under 12 years old. Bye. I love nightly news. Thanks. We're glad you're watching. That's really kind of a follow up to what we were just talking about, Doc. Yeah, Aaron's got a great question. And you know, a lot of people think, well, why can't I just get the adult dose and put it into kids? If it works for adults, it should work for kids. But we learned in medical school when I was going through and learning about medicine that children are just not small adults. In other words, you can't just give them the same thing you give adults. You have to do special testing. More than likely, not much would happen if you gave them the adult dose, but we don't know for sure. And that's why they're doing the trials and they're doing them in groups. So five to 11 year olds, and then they're going to smaller children, two to four-year-olds to make sure they're safe and then six months to two-year-olds it's important they test them in all those age groups to make sure it's safe and effective for them before they authorize them all right dr john thank you as always you bet all right now let's switch gears and turn to a very special celebration you may remember the giant panda cub we introduced you to i think it was last august at smithsonian's national zoo well the little guy just turned one so the Cubs celebrated with a panda-friendly birthday cake. Happy birthday. And in keeping with the cuteness theme we've got going, here's my favorite picture of the week. Check this out. This popular sea otter in Japan is gaining lots of attention, thanks in part to her playful ways. You can see her playing with all sorts of things. Looks like she's having a ball. The aquarium says they are letting the marine mammal play with various objects for the sake of her well-being. So you got to love it. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, we highlight the power of teamwork. Two kids we featured here on this program have decided to pair up on a special project that has brought their communities together. Our friend Kristen Dahlgren has the story. They say teamwork makes the dream work, and two young heroes are proving that to be true. Just want to tell you thank you for uh, supporting me all the way through this project, and I had a really great time doing it. I'm so excited and it's been so much fun working with you, so thank you. A few months ago, we met 13-year-old CJ Matthews in Georgia, the founder of Blankies for Buddies. He gathers and donates blankets and activity bags to kids who are homeless, sick, or in foster care, inspired by a thought. What can we do to make um, anyone comfortable? He said blankets. Blankets are warm, they're soft, and they're comfortable to be in. What we would do is we would donate blankets to anyone who needed comfort. There's a lot of caps that we have gotten so far. And then there's 12-year-old Sammy Vance in Indiana who turns bottle caps into benches. I love them. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? In hopes of brightening communities with buddy benches. A buddy bench is a place for when someone is lonely. To connect people who feel lonely a mission with many goals. It would be helping the environment, helping friendships, and also bringing the community closer together as we collect the caps. Though cities apart, the teens recently partnered up on a special mission, 
The two young leaders work together to collect bottle caps and raise money to build a buddy bench in CJ's community. During that process, we were going to people's houses, um, picking up big bags of caps, small bags of caps. <laughs> it was just a lot. And so we had help from a couple of local businesses who were consistently with us the whole way through. I thought it was just really cool and inspiring, so it could inspire a lot of other people. I know that that bench is going to help a lot of people. Cities away, the two have forged a new bond built on kindness and lessons learned. If you have an idea, then just do it. I like to say that you don't just have being dealt to make difference. You could be a kid too. And also one small thing can make a big difference. All right, Kristen, thanks so much. What a great story that is. Well, that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, feel free to email a video to us at nightlynewskids at nbcuni.com. And remember, you can always follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to take care of yourself and each other. So long.